This is the demo for College Algebra Lesson 26. Consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. What x values are excluded from the domain? So we immediately look at the denominator and we say, you can't plug any x value into this function that would make its denominator 0. So I need to exclude anything that would make x plus 3 equal to 0, which means x equals negative 3 is excluded from the domain. Okay, next I want to reduce my function to lowest terms. So x squared minus 9, that can factor to x plus 3, x minus 3, all over x plus 3. And then I have um, factors in common on the top and the bottom. They both have an x plus 3, so those cancel, and this reduces to x minus 3. So to graph this function, it's going to look exactly like this function, x minus 3, except you can't put negative 3 in. Okay, so I could make um, an xy chart, x, f of x, and pick, I, this is a line, x minus 3 is just a line, so I can just pick a few points, maybe 0 for x and um, 1, 2, 3. That's more than enough. I only need 2, but I'm just going to pick a few. Um, maybe I'll do a few negatives too. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Okay, so you can plug them into here or into here because these two functions are equal almost all the time. The only time they're not equal is when x is negative 3. Okay. So if I put a 0 into this function, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Put a 0 into this function, and you get negative 9 over 3, which is negative 3. So same thing. You get the same thing if you put a 0 in. If you put a 1 in here, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And if you put a 1 in here, you get 1 squared, which is 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Um, over 4 is negative 2. Negative 8 over 4, negative 2. So this function and this function are the same almost everywhere. So I'm going to use this one. Um, for most x values. Okay, so if I put a 2 in for x, I get negative 1. If I put a 3 in, I get 0. Now, if I put a negative 3 into this function, I'd get a negative 6. However, if I try to put a negative 3 into this function, I get undefined. Okay, so this is actually not a point on the graph of this function because negative 3 makes this undefined. So I'm going to put um, a little open circle here to remind myself that this particular point is not included on the graph. Okay, then negative 2, if I put a negative 2 here, I get negative 5. And if I put a negative 1 in here, I get negative 4. And I get the same thing in here too, right? If I put negative 2 in here, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 9 is negative 5 over 1 is negative 5. Okay, so I'm going to plot these points. I have 0, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 3, 0, negative 3, negative 6 is not actually on my graph. Um, I'm going to put an open circle there. And then negative 2, negative 5 and negative 1, negative 4. All my points fall in a line, but I just have to remember that this particular point, while it's on this line, it's not on this line because x equals negative 3 is excluded from the domain. So if I just connect these, I get a nice straight line, but it's got a hole in it at negative 3. Okay, some notes on excluded x values. X values that make the denominator equal to zero can result in a vertical asymptote, um, like we saw in the preview, or a hole in the graph, like we saw in the previous example. So we get a vertical asymptote if the X value makes the denominator, but not the numerator, equal to zero. In this case, um, positive and negative two, X equals positive and negative two. Both of those make the denominator of this function zero, but not the numerator. So I have vertical asymptotes at positive and negative two. 
Now you may get a hole when the x value makes both the denominator and the numerator equal to zero. So let's see what happens here with h of x. So if I factor the numerator, I get x plus three times x plus two, and the denominator factors to x plus two times x plus one, my x plus twos cancel. Okay, so when you have a factor that um, makes both the denominator and the numerator a zero, you might get a whole. So x equals negative two, possible whole. The x equals negative one, that will make my denominator zero, but not the numerator, so that gives me a vertical asymptote. So you can see here, we've got the vertical asymptote at negative one, and then when you graph points on the function, we just have to make sure we leave out the point at x equals negative two. We get a whole. Steps to graphing a rational function that is not an easy transformation of one over x or one over x squared. So step one, find any values of x that are excluded from the domain. Step two, fully reduce and identify x values of any potential holes. Step three, find any vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator of the reduced function equal to zero and solving for x. Find horizontal asymptote, if there is one, by comparing the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. So we learned this rule um, in a previous lesson, but here it is um, as a reminder. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then your horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. If the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of leading coefficients of the numerator and the denominator. And then finally, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so now we have found potential holes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Now we find the y-intercept by plugging zero in for x. We find x-intercepts by setting the numerator equal to zero and solving for x. And then we check for symmetry. And then we plot at least one point between and beyond each x-intercept and vertical asymptote. Finally, we connect the points using the asymptotes as a guide. Okay, a few fun facts about horizontal and vertical asymptotes. A rational function may have several vertical asymptotes, but it can have at most one horizontal. And although a graph can never intersect a vertical asymptote, it may cross its horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes are guides for end behavior at the far right and the far left. So in the middle, um, you might have your function cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that procedure was um, sounded like a lot when you just write it all down, so hopefully an example will make it clearer. So the domain is um, any, any x value that will not make this denominator zero. So I need to know when will this denominator be zero. I set x squared minus nine equal to zero, and you get x is plus or minus three. Those are excluded values from the domain. So the domain would be negative infinity to negative three, union negative three to three, union three to infinity. Okay, next we reduce and identify any potential holes. So two x squared, that cannot be factored. x squared minus nine factors to x plus three, x minus three. We have no common factors on the top and the bottom, so no potential holes. Vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator of the reduced function equals zero. So that would happen um, at x equals negative three and x equals three. Horizontal asymptotes, we compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. They are both two, they're the same. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients, so two over one, or just y equals two. To find a y-intercept, you make x is zero. So this would be two times zero squared over zero squared minus nine, which is zero. To find x-intercepts, in general, for any function, to find x-intercepts, you make y zero. So I'm gonna do zero equals two x squared over x squared minus nine. However, 
The only way a fraction can equal zero is if its numerator is zero. The denominator can be anything, anything. If its numerator is zero, the whole function, the whole fraction equals zero. So I really only need to know when 2x squared equals zero. And that happens when x equals zero. Symmetry, so I'm gonna plug in um, f of negative x and see if I get my original function or the exact opposite of my original function. So f of negative x would be two times negative x squared over negative x squared minus nine. And negative x squared is the same thing as positive x squared. Um, so this is two x squared over x squared minus nine which is my original f of f of x. And when the y values for opposite x values are the same, that means we have y-axis symmetry. Okay, so let's draw what we have so far, and then we'll figure out what other points we might need. So I have vertical asymptotes at three and negative three. I'll put these in, and here's negative three. I have um, x and y intercept are both at zero, so I just have that point there. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. I'm only going to put that beyond the vertical asymptotes because horizontal asymptotes govern end behavior, not middle behavior. So I'm only gonna put them to the far right and the far left. Okay, that's all I have so far, um, which is helpful, but I think I need some more points. I need at least one point between and beyond each x-intercept and vertical asymptote. So something between this x-intercept and this vertical asymptote, so maybe one or two, I think I'm gonna do one. And then I need something between this x-intercept and this vertical asymptote, maybe negative one. And then I need an x value after this vertical asymptote, I'm gonna do five. And then I'm gonna do negative five over here, something after this vertical asymptote. So I'll do five and negative five. I'm gonna plug each of these x's into my function and see what I get. Okay, so um, a calculator can tell me that if I plug in a one, I get negative one fourth. And if I plug in negative one, I also get negative one fourth because this function has y-axis symmetry. And if I plug in five or negative five, I get 3.125. Okay, so let's plot those four points. One, negative a quarter, negative one, negative a quarter, and then five, 3.125, go right there, and negative five, 3.125. Okay, so now I have enough um, to be able to use my asymptotes as guides. So if I were to connect these with a nice smooth curve, and know that my graph has to approach my asymptote, the center of my graph looks like it's gonna have to go down towards the asymptotes on either side. And then the end behavior at the right, so this point, it's in this sort of quadrant that has been partitioned off by my vertical and horizontal asymptote. Um, so I know that it has to go up to this asymptote and down to this asymptote. So this is gonna look something like this. And same thing on the left because this has y-axis symmetry. This goes up like that and down towards the horizontal asymptote.